All right, hi everyone. Welcome to today's video. Today I'm gonna to talk about the topic of how I stopped being codependent in my relationship. Now this is such a huge, huge aspect of just healing your wounds and turning your relationship around when it comes to love. And I know this was a big one for me. It's something that I've been working on for years and I still do the work on this. So if this is something that you already know affects you, just don't give up hope. This is kind of like, life's work in a way, right? It is a journey. It is something that you may just always have to catch yourself with, right? And it doesn't mean that it doesn't get easier because it definitely gets a lot easier and it gets a lot less intense, but you might have to catch yourself a lot of times. So I'm going to give you three um, ways that share with you the three ways that I stop being codependent. And I just want you to keep in mind that these are going to take like Practice, practice, practice. Um, and one of the great resources too, I'll share before I forget, because someone, I did a video where I talked a little bit about codependency um, and um, she had asked me if I had read the book Codependent No More. And I was like, uh, yeah, this is like a classic book. Um, if you find yourself in that situation, it does have a very much a religious land. So just keep that in mind. And if that's something that you really resonate with, you will probably love this book. And secondly, um, it's in the context of alcoholism. So in the context of addiction. So if that's something that you've dealt with, codependency is likely something you're going to want to have, you're going to want to look at because it's very, very prevalent in that type of environment. So I'm just going to jump right in and share the three ways that I stop being codependent in my own relationship and how I work. Also, some of the, the tools that I share with women who are also in this situation so they can get over the codependency. The first way that I stopped being codependent myself was to really have have strong boundaries, all right? So boundaries, pretty much like the set of standards and conditions that you set for yourself out of self-love so that you can be in integrity with your beliefs and your values. So it's all about setting the standards and conditions that you want to see present in this case, in our love life, in our relationship, and making sure that those are aligned to what you truly value in life, what you truly believe, and to help you um, act in accordance to that. It doesn't mean that, you know, to not be codependent, you have to be in an environment that's like perfect, right? <laughs> like this like lab where all the conditions are all the way that you feel they should be, like that are all your values are always perfectly um you know, reflected in, in the relationship or in your life or in the environment, it just it just dictates how you are going to um, behave or act in those situations so that you can you can personally still feel aligned with those beliefs and values and still live them despite what's going around you, right? Because chances are nothing's going to be perfect, right? You're going to have, we live in a world with all this diversity, um, differences, and that's what makes it beautiful, right? But out of self-love and self-respect for ourselves, we want to show up in a way of integrity that aligns with what we believe in. There are two types of boundaries, the in internal ones and the external ones. And the internal ones are the ones, like I said, that you have with yourself. The external ones are the ones that you set with, with other people or with your environment. And I always encourage women, the way that I was able to really overcome this codependency was to really start in the beginning focusing on those internal boundaries because what I find is that it it's a lot more difficult to set boundaries with another person or with like a situation because you don't have control over how that person's going to react to your boundary and if there's you know a negative reaction that really triggers you, it can make it very difficult to... Um, uphold and follow through with that boundary. It can throw you off, right? Whereas if you're doing a boundary with yourself, um, you don't have to worry so much about that external factor that you can control, you cannot control. So I always encourage you the first way to start getting over your codependency is to really start looking at those boundaries you have for yourself, right? So if you're feeling very, you know, um, codependent with someone, if that person, either their moods or their behaviors are really triggering to you and really kind of upset you emotionally, the first thing you're going to want to set is how you, you're, you're going to want to look at is that trigger that gets déclenché. I can't even think of that word in English, that trigger that's um, unleashed is the wrong word, but hopefully you know what I mean by that. So you're going to want to look at that, right? And set that boundary with yourself that's, okay, do you know what? I don't want to feel that way anymore. 
right? When this happens, I, I want to feel this way or I want to react that way. And you practice over and over following through with that with yourself, right? And the judge of your progress and your measure of success is how well you actually follow through with that with yourself. So you're removing that expectation from the other person, which may throw you off, or if you're not getting the result from the other person right away, you know, that also might throw you off and cause you to give up and just say, it's not working, um, you know, there's nothing to do, he needs to change or whatnot, right? We really wanna work on our own internal boundaries. So that's gonna be number one. So the second way that I stopped being a codependent in my relationship was really asking myself, how is this benefiting my relationship, right? Like how is being codependent really helping out here? And the honest answer with myself was it wasn't at all. It was actually having the opposite effect where it was like harming our relationship and preventing it from growing. It was it was making it, you know, get worse instead of get better, right? We weren't growing stronger together. We were growing more apart because we were very much, you know, entangled and, and dependent on each other's relationships as or or either mood or actions, like I said, or or feelings, right? Instead of being more proactive and having that space between us, right? Like still being connected, but without having that enmeshment or this entanglement of, of being, you know, dependent on how the other person is acting or reacting, right? So I had to get very honest with myself in terms of, you know, how is this really benefiting us? And how is this even supportive to the other person, right? Our spouse, our husband, our partner, to, to put that pressure of the other person having to be a certain way and act a certain way and being responsible almost for our emotions. Now, this is going to be really, really difficult in situations, like I said, where there's um, addiction. And that's what the book I was sharing with you earlier, you know, really focuses on because it's such a clear example of where there's a strong code dependency in many situations and actually that codependency in that situation makes it even harder for the addiction to even loosen up or even go away or diminish right the more you can be codependent um not be codependent being like independent i don't know if that's the actual um opposite or antonym to to codependency but you know you want to be in your power, right? In your power and really being brutally honest with yourself and asking, okay, how is me being so affected by these emotions really helping in a relationship? And like I said in other videos, it's not about being like cold or distant, right? We can still be empathetic about what's going on. We can still not like what the behavior or the words or the emotions coming from the other person. We can still not accept that um, but it's about not letting it affect us so much that's that's really the nuance here that's really the key and also another question I was asking myself to help getting through it is to really I don't know if you heard my husband I don't know if my husband realized I'm doing a live video right now but he says you're kicking ass this morning so thanks babe love you <laughs> Um, so the other question I has, I ask myself too is, um, yeah, how is that benefiting my spouse? Um, it, and at the end of the day, I just realized it's draining to the both of us, right? Um, so that will be number two. So number three is how asking myself, how do I give myself what I need? So like I said earlier, being codependent shows like there's a heavy reliance on the, uh, on the other person. So if you want to start breaking out of this habit of being codependent, one of the steps you're going to want to take to stop being codependent is to start finding ways that you can give yourself what you need, right? So instead of being dependent on, like I said, the actions, the emotions, the feelings, what the other person says all the time, it's going to be find ways that you can help yourself meet those needs needs. At the end of the day, I always say, <laughs> my husband's still listening to this, he's going to be like, you know, rolling his eyes, but like, I don't need my husband. I want my husband, right? I want to be with him. I don't need him. I can feel my needs myself, my emotional needs, my financial needs. I don't have that codependency. When I really look at it, right? I am with him because I want to be with him. And when I started really shifting my mindset towards that focus 
of being able to meet my own needs and then whatever needs he gives me, right, or whatever area I want to be kind of codependent, but in a healthy way <laughs> that's even possible and, and, and take from, you know, the behaviors that are maybe aligned to my values and behaviors, that, that's fine because I'm still at the foundational level, I'm still meeting all of my needs. So that really helped me detach in a healthy way and attach it's still attached in ways that are healthy. So it's not about being cold or distant or, or not caring about the other person. It's just, again, this example of putting your, in, in the airplane, I know it's a classic example, everyone talks about it, but putting your oxygen mask off for, on first so that you can still be there for the other person without, you know, both of you guys pulling and struggling for that same oxygen mask. So if that makes any sense. So those are the three ways how I stopped <clears throat> It's early in the morning. I'm going to grab my tea here. <clears throat> Those are the three ways how I stop being codependent in my relationship. So number one, really start setting boundaries. And like I said, start with those internal boundaries with yourself. Number two, start asking yourself these questions, right? Like how is this every time that's a great tool, like in the moment when you're triggered, like how is this helping me feeling this way? right? What can I do to feel better? And the better I feel, the better vibe, the better energy I put out there for the other person, right? And number three, how do I start giving myself more of what I need in this relationship? So those are the three ways. I hope this was interesting. As always, if you have any questions, comments, leave them here below and I will get back to all of them. Have such a wonderful day and I will see you guys in the next live video.